Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Alpine component of the 2020 Great Ontario Yield Tour. Alpine is a proud partner in this event for the last five years, and our scouts have been working hard out in the fields the last couple of weeks in Ontario, trying to get that accurate yield estimate for everybody. We want to take a few minutes of your time today and tell you about a couple of new exciting products in our KTAC lineup. KTAC is Alpine's exclusive new potassium technology. We're currently using it in two starter products, Alpine G241S and Alpine HKW6, both in furrow starters. And we also have it in two super foliar products, Alpine K20S and Alpine K24. KTEC brings advantages for both soil and foliar applications. Today, I'm pleased to present two new products in this spectrum to you, Alpine F18 Max, a foliar product, and Alpine K19S, which is a UAN side dress companion. The first underlying principle behind all of the new attention on potassium nutrition comes from this graph. This is data from ANL Labs and shows the trend when all their, their soil tests are pooled together. Potash levels, for the most part, are declining in growers' fields. This can be attributed to a couple of reasons. The first is less livestock production and manure applications are declining. Also, bigger yields, soybeans and corn and wheat are all yielding better for us now, and we're pulling more potassium out of the soil, so we really haven't kept pace with replacing it. On the foliar side, our new introduction to the market is Alpine F18 Max, featuring KTEC potassium. We began marketing it this season and had very good uptake on several crops. Alpine F18 Max is an 8, 4, 6 with 1% zinc, 1% manganese, 0.1 boron, and 0.05 copper. Of course, the potassium is sourced from KTEC. It also carries organic acids, surfactants, and compatibility agents. As you can see in the picture on the screen, it's a beautiful clear blue product, a little unique. We haven't seen any like that before. Uh, very nice to work with, uh, flows well, mixes well. We've had it applied with many crop protection products through this season and had no tank mixing issues in, in sprayers. The label on it is good for all crops. It's both used to correct efficiencies and get the crops through some of those stressful times they encounter through the growing season, whether it's a stress from a crop protection application or a climatic stretch stress such as drought, too wet, too hot, too cold. We found one usage rate works well for it at one liter an acre. Some of our plots have been tried at two liters an acre and there doesn't seem to be any advantage to the higher usage rate. So it's a good low use rate where you can get a, quite a few acres out of a jug or a tote. Another differentiating factor with Alpine F18 Max is the very strong amount of zinc and manganese in it with 1% each. A lot of similar products in this market space are only at 0.05% zinc and manganese, which is 20 times less. So the, the micronutrient load is very strong and coincidentally enough, all our three main crops require those two micronutrients in pretty good quantities. Um, Cereals, beans, and corn all respond well to zinc and manganese. We have to change the way we think a little bit about nutrient application. There's been a proliferation in Ontario with uh, post-emerge sprayers on all operations. And I think often they're thought of as strictly a crop protection applicator. But we must also think of it as a nutrient applicator. And by nutrient, I mean outside of UAN solutions, which often go on with them. There's countless times these machines are going over crops and all that's in that water tank is some crop protectant. We need to think differently and add crop nutrients. The best way to do this is to uh, get a good tissue sample taken a few days before you plan your crop protection application 
and you might be surprised what you find. It could be as simple as a little bit of boron needed to keep that crop moving on or some other nutrients are starting to go deficient on you as well and it's a perfect time to get some nutrient on that crop. Like everybody, we all need to make sure there's a solid return on investment when we put a product on a crop. We only started working with F18 Max in Ontario plots last year and had some very encouraging results, but we are always hesitant to release one year's data in Ontario. Thus, we are trialing again this year in our plot program to continue to build that database. However, our uh, sister company in the United States has had this product on the market a few years and they have a culmination of 55 trials on corn. And here's the results of it in a graph. And you can see across those 55 trials in the, in the US Corn Belt, it had a 4.9 bushel advantage over putting no treatment on. And uh, it did give a response over three quarters of the time, 76%. So, very encouraging data on corn out of the US on this. And our early indications in Ontario are as well that it's giving a nice yield bump. We'll uh, hopefully publish our plot book toward the end of the year here. Plots should be off early and uh, show our numbers as well. I wanna spend a few slides on what differentiates Alpine KTEC when we get into foliar applications and why it's a superior potash source for foliar. This first graph is from the Journal of Plant Nutrition, and it shows the potassium absorption on soybean leaves of different sources of potassium. KTEC is formed from potassium acetate, and you can see potassium acetate on the left side of this graph gives nearly 50% absorption into soybean leaves. When we move right on this bar graph, we see the declining absorption rate of different sources of potassium through a soybean leaf. So some of them are getting very, very little uptake when put on through the leaf. Another source that goes into its good response it gives on crops, KTEC is very, very small molecule. Because of this, it gets in through the plant cell membrane, membranes at a faster rate than some other products in the market that have a higher molecular weight. One that used to be the industry standard is the fourth one down, potassium carbonate, which we market as Alpine double OK 0030. It was the industry standard for foliar potassium application, but now KTEC has moved ahead of it. Don't let this big word intimidate you. I'll try to explain it the best I can. Point of deliquescence is another measuring measurement of foliar products as they apply to crops. What the point of deliquescence essentially is, is the relative humidity in which a product applied to a crop re-wets itself for uptake. You have to appreciate when these are sprayed on crops, they, they dry on the leaf and they need some level of humidity to re-wet to become soluble to move into the leaf. Alpine KTEC re-wets itself at a humidity of 23.3, so very low. There's virtually no time, certainly in Ontario in the summertime, that our humidity is below that level. So it, it gets into the plant from this perspective very well. And I mentioned Alpine Double OK, which used to be the standard in foliar potassium nutrition, and it's, it's almost double the point of deliquescence of Alpine KTEC. Salt index is also a key factor on both foliar applied and soil applied applications. And you can see Alpine KTEC carries a very low sulfur in, sorry, very low salt index compared to other potassium products. Another unique factor about Alpine KTEC is the acetate component of it. Rather than being a salt that's of no value or a detrimental value to a plant, Acetate is actually part of a plant's metabol metabolic process and is used within the plant in uh, physiological reactions. So you're feeding the plant both potassium and a food source for the plant. As I get to the end of the F18 max component of this presentation, I want to show you some picture proof. A picture's worth a thousand words, and here's some 
good shots from Ontario the past couple of years of what we can do on these crops. This slide is a situation where a grower approached our alpine rep with a very pale, sickly looking edible bean crop as is shown on the right part of this slide. Our rep tissue sampled the field, found the proper nutrients it needed, which as suspected was a potassium deficiency, which is indicated by the yellowing of these leaves. We applied some KTEC potassium to it in the form of our Alpine K20S. And a few days later, it was a healthy green color. This grower was good enough to shut the boom off for 150 feet, and we were able to get in and get some pictures and follow up on it. But a very dramatic response that really does prove the KTAC potassium gets into your crops. A second set of pictures here, this one from the other end of the province, uh, the Ottawa Valley. The previous one was from North of Stratford. Here was a picture last year. This came to us unsolicited after they'd used our product. And as you can tell by the tree line, it's the same location. Severely deficient potash soybeans on the left side. On the right side, 24 hours after application, they're totally green back up from that potash getting into those leaves and getting the crop going again. This looked to me a drought situation, which can also induce potassium deficiency. I'm going to switch gears now and uh, give you a brief rundown on a brand new product for us that we haven't released commercially yet. We're only uh, looking at it in trials this year. However, it is backed again by US data from our sister company. It's Alpine K19S. This is a companion product to tank mix with UAN solutions, mainly at side dress and wide drop timings to get some extra potassium and sulfur into that crop. It has a low usage rate, one to two gallons an acre, and it does mix well with UAN, which has been a challenge for certain pota potassium products. We have both small trials and on-farm trials this year to get a good look at it. Solubility of KTEC becomes a big factor when we're looking at soil applications, and it, it, this goes back to our soil applied starters as well with KTEC. But Alpine KTEC is a highly soluble potash source. This shows how many grams will dissolve in 100 mil of water. KTEC 255. Some lower products on the list are potassium chloride, your common muriate of potash. It only has 34.3 grams dissolving in 100 mil. Even K thio, which is a decent product, is 96.1. This picture really shows it in a graphic way, the solubility of potassium acetate or KTEC. Two and a half fluid ounces of water on the, on the left bottle. And that's how much powder in the dry form of each of these potassium sources will dissolve in not much water. So you can see a little bit of water will dissolve a lot of potassium acetate. Another great feature on soil applications of KTEC is not only is the potassium source a plant nutrient as we all know, but the acetate is a great plant stimulant and gets the microbes in the soil going. What it does is feed the mycorrhizae to the point that mycorrhizae actually prefer acetate for a food source. Here's work done in 2015 at Texas A&M with feeding uh, different potassium sources into the soil and comparing the, uh, the soil microbial biomass. The pink bar is just straight water applied. And you can see with potassium hydroxide in the blue chart or potassium carbonate, the orange one, it actually was detrimental to soil microbes. When KTEC was applied, the microbes flourished and their biomass increased dramatically. Also playing into the side dress timing with potassium is it does sink itself in well with when the peak K uptake is happening on a corn crop. This graph shows the days after planting of peak potassium uptake times, and we can see those large bars, especially the big one about 65 days after planting, which is fairly close to uh, just after a side dress application with K19S would happen. And so it gives you the ability to spoon feed some more potash, highly soluble, into that corn crop, right before it has a large accumulation of potassium coming. Mulder's chart, if anybody's been very involved with 
crop nutrition. It's one of the first things you learn about. We know that there's a strong interaction between a lot of different nutrients. However, nitrogen and potash are very closely linked, where if you need higher nitrogen applications on many of these crops, which we're doing, we have to balance it with potassium. This graph shows different nitrogen rates and different potash rates and how they're linked together in driving high yields. At and, you know, even at an 80 pound an acre potassium rate, you're still not maximizing your yield at those high nitrogen levels until you get that potassium up to 120 pounds an acre. And this is just one, one example, but those two have to work together to drive yield. Here's work from our uh, American sister company, Nature's, from 36 trials across the Corn Belt on uh, adding K19S to UAN at side dress time. And we can see about a 6.7 bushel yield advantage by doing so. As I said, we have lots of trials out this year and hopefully we can replicate this data and have a good story to bring to you this winter on this new product. As I begin to wind down, I want to get a, a little plug in for 4R nutrient stewardship. Alpine's products are all very 4R when you go through the four parameters of 4R. We, we have the right available source of nutrients at the right rate the crop needs timing um, we're putting it either right in the furrow we're putting it at a side dress application or or we're going across that field with a foliar application to time it as to when the crop needs it and of course the right place we've been for our friendly since alpine was created in 1974. alpine's team's out there to support you we are proud to have eight certified crop advisors in ontario don't be afraid to reach out to them and they can develop a sound nutrition plan for your crop. We're excited also this year, and you've probably heard it already through the uh, yield tour events with precision planning. We're excited to have an equipment rebate program, and this will help defray some of the cost of adding that precision equipment to your planter. We've uh, got sheets available for the rebates from your Alpine rep for your precision dealer. You could qualify up to $450 per row of your planter over three years based on your purchases of Alpine K-Tech soil applied products. Hopefully this is something that can help your purchasing decision on getting the most out of your planter. This time I'd like to thank everyone for listening and wish you all the best of luck with this fall harvest. Please stay safe and uh, hopefully next year we can talk live. Thank you.